what does the Quran look like embodied? Is it just the idea that it's something that you can recite? You know, the word Quran means that it's something that's frequently recited, or is it more than that? And what does it mean to embody it? If what it means to embody it is that you recite it, then you're no more impressive than your phone or then your whatever device it is that you listen to the Quran being recited because at the end of the day that's called parroting but actually protecting it and guarding it and absorbing it is a whole nother level and there's this beautiful example that the Prophet Sallallahu gave about the way that the Quran lands upon people when you think about someone who has substance when people say people of substance, we need people of substance. What they're talking about is people that have something on the interior that's stronger than anything that can be explained or seen or visualized in the exterior. That you're made of something. When people say you're made of something or what are you made of or what's on the inside. What they're usually referring to is a sense of strength, a sense of beauty, something that is both invisible, at least in the way that our exteriors are visible, and something that is inaccessible to those that wish you harm. Again, it's invisible and in that you can't see it, and it's also inaccessible to those that are trying to harm you. It's deep inside, no one can access it except for you, and you access it in a way that causes you to transform the environment around you. So I think of this hadith, right? The Prophet ﷺ said that the example of people upon whom the revelation falls are like the different types of lands. Some people are like hard land that's shaped in a way that's like a rock. The rain just hits it, it doesn't absorb it, the rock doesn't absorb it, the surface doesn't absorb it, nor does it benefit anybody or anything else around it. Then the Prophet said, but there's then a surface that's like, it's hard, but it's bowl shaped, or it's, it's shaped in a way that it could carry some water, but none of the water is absorbed. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's surface that's like soil. It takes in the water. It absorbs it. And, you know, if you think about this in terms of benefit, by the way, right, the, the, the bowl-shaped surface that carries water right away offers an immediate sense of gratification and benefit to everything but itself. But once the water is gone, it's just like the first type of land, right? It's exposed for its bareness and for its hardness. That type of person, the Prophet ﷺ has said, is like a person who benefits others with the revelation but does not benefit themselves. Meaning for a short while, you're able to get something out of it and you're able to offer something from it, but the water gets drunk really quick and then there's nothing left to it. You never actually absorbed it, you just gave others something of it to benefit from. But that other person that's like soil, when the soil absorbs the water, that means that first and foremost, the primary beneficiary of that water, of that revelation, is the person themselves. That it went deep inside of me. It penetrated. The other implication of that is that it's going to bear fruit and bear vegetation in the long run. So while the surface that carries the water, in a, that's a hard surface in the short term, gives people an immediate sense of benefit, the soil doesn't provide immediate benefit, but it provides long-term benefits. And that type of benefit is not just to other parties, but it starts off with you. You soak it in. Your heart gets saturated by it. And SubhanAllah, you know what else? That type of vegetation, whatever comes out of that, you might be able to break a branch or break a tree, but it's so deeply rooted in the soil of your heart that even if people are able to get you momentarily, you'll just grow something else back.